We we'll now call our November 23rd <coughs> County Commission meeting to order. Call on Mr. Johnson for the invocation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let's pray, please. Heavenly Father, again, we come in your presence. Although we're invited, Father, we express our own shortcomings. And we confess them. We ask for your wisdom. We ask for the forgiveness of our sins, that you would impart your wisdom to us, Father, that we may act in a way that would please you and to be of greatest benefit to the people of this county. And we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Let us stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Master, do we have adjustments to the agenda? Mr. Chairman, there are just a couple of adjustments to make uh, under administrative matters. Item A, which is memo number three, item A, memo number three, that will be pulled from the agenda this evening and will be placed on uh, the first meeting, regular meeting in December. There, item I, there's a part, a portion of that that um, we found out later should have been included, and that is a request from the um, Department of Transportation for a waiver of the fees to abandon that road. Uh, Mr. Smith is here and he can discuss that with you later. But part of that request is a request to waive the fees to abandon that road. Those are the two changes I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Are there any additions, corrections? Just a question, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mashburn, I apologize. The item to delete was memo number three. Is that correct? Memo number three, item A, under administrative matters. Thanks, sir. Any additional questions? Anything else to add? If not, I will entertain a motion. For motion to approve the agenda as amended, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any questions regarding the motion? All in favor, most please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Appointment before the board, Ms. Blumenstein. I think she's you here. Sure. Amber McGinnis is here tonight to present our financial report, our June 30, 2010 audit. And I want to say I appreciate every county employee, every department head in maintaining a, a good financial status for us this year. The accountability is it just exemplary, and I appreciate the board's support and your guidance. 2010 wasn't easy for any of us, and we appreciate your, your support throughout the year. And I'll ask Amber to come to the microphone. Okay. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, thank you for allowing me to come present to you tonight a summary of the 2009-2010 um, financial statements. I do have a set of slides here to show to you, and you should also have a copy of them in your agenda packets. First of all, I would like to, thank you. First of all, I would like to thank Susan and Deb and their staff for their cooperation in the audit. It, it would not be possible to, to complete the audit in a timely manner and to get the information that we need to um, perform the audit without their assistance. The audit did receive, the financial statements did receive an unqualified opinion, which is a clean opinion. Um, so that's what, what you're aiming for. The general fund cash was approximately 35 million at June 30th. General fund revenues totaled 157 million and expenditures came in at 158 million. This slide shows a general fund summary with 2009 and 2010. The left side of each set is revenues and other financing sources, which would be debt proceeds, transfers in from other funds. And the right side is expenditures and other financing uses, which would be transfers out. We have a few slides on fund balance, and this really serves as a measure of the county's financial resources available. And currently they are classified in three categories, reserved, unreserved but designated, and unreserved and undesignated. And both of those last two um, categories are available fund balance. 
<coughs> Here we show a history of total fund balance since 2008. And you can see 2010's total fund balance for the general fund was approximately 43 million. And that was about a 1.9 million decrease over 630-2009. Here we have fund balance position. Total fund balance less the reserved fund balance amounts leaves your unreserved and undesignated at approximately 25 million at June 30th. This slide shows unreserved fund balance as a percentage of your general fund expenditures, and you can see that that increased one percentage point over 2009 to 16%, and that's approximately two months' worth of expenses in your general fund fund balance. The next series of slides discusses general fund revenues. The top spot um, was property taxes, of course, at 58%. Sales tax was second at 16%. And federal, federal and state grants was third at 13%. And then other revenue sources made up 13%. That, on that last slide, the, yes. uh, the, the percentages are a little bit skewed just mainly because the sales tax revenues were down. I mean, as a, as a percentage in the past. Yes, it's probably generally been a little bit higher percentage. Is that what you mean? Yeah. I don't have last year's percentages with okay. me, but that's fine. <clears throat> property tax increased um, about 2.8 percent to 91 million 700 thousand for 2010. Sales tax, of course, decreased um, approximately 17 percent over 2009 to 24 million 700 thousand. And federal and state grants actually increased about 7% to 20300000 and the majority of that increase was due to um, several ARRA funding um, grants received in the fiscal year. Same information presented for expenditures. The top um, function of expenditures was education at 32%, human services was second at 21%, and public safety third at 17%. This slide shows the education expenses, and this does not include the debt service for schools. And this showed a decrease of 1.3%. Human services decreased 1.2 million or 3.5% over June 30th, 2009. And a lot of that had to do with the Medicaid expenses. Can I get you to move the microphone a little bit closer, please? Sure. Sorry about that. Next is public safety. A decrease of 1.3 million or 4.5 percent. And we have one slide on the enterprise fund, the solid waste disposal facility fund. And really the focus of this slide should be um, the last two lines, that the cash flow from operations was sufficient to cover the debt service, 3.5 million to the 2.1 million of debt service for the year. And that's what you like to see. This next, next series of slides um, discusses survey results from a survey conducted by the North Carolina County Commissioners Association. You may have heard, seen some of these results before. 95 out of the 100 North Carolina counties responded to this. And it really just um, paints a picture of the current and state and local conditions in the economy. 16 counties that responded increased their tax rate at an average of 3.3 cents during the 09-10 fiscal year. 49 counties of the 95 cut budgets again as they did the year before. 44 counties reported a hiring freeze and 14 counties laid off existing employees. And I'll just hit some of the highlights on these. 43 counties cut <coughs> positions. Seven counties implemented mandatory furloughs. And some of the other actions that counties um, took included salary decreases, fewer paid holidays, and decreased or stopped 401k contributions. 25 counties of the 95 that responded also saw property decreased valuations, and 31 of the 100 counties um, in the state saw um, assessed tax value above the market value. And of course, the last two lines there show that sales tax dropped off again 
um, as in the previous year. Here we see that 48 counties relied on fund balance to help offset budget deficit in 2010, and I'm actually surprised that number isn't higher than 48. Um, 20 counties used fund balance to replace lottery funds, and 61 counties reported using some or all of the lottery funds for school debt service. <laughs> this is where the focus really is. This shows what our state legislature faces right now. The 2009-10 budget included $1.3 billion in temporary taxes, $1.6 billion in federal stimulus dollars, and $0.3 billion in other non-recurring budget reductions. So the total of that is a, is a budget gap going into the 2011-12 fiscal year of $3.2 billion. So what does that mean to local government? Um, they keep saying transformational government, so I guess we'll wait to see what that means. Um, they may be combining departments at the state level, potential loss of jobs, and then the retirement system is massively underfunded. As, as you probably know, the contribution rates are increasing. Um, grant funding possibly be reduced, and they may be passing along um, some expenditures back to the county. And we expect that money from the state will be slow coming. Um, if you have a reimbursement grant, you may want to reimburse um, request reimbursement as soon as you can because you may be waiting on those funds for a while. So the state is actually in um, financial trouble and this will definitely affect local government. So we just wanted to provide those survey results to you for your information. The last slide I have discusses a financial reporting change for the June 30th, 2011 fiscal year. And this is a, a standard passed down from the Governmental Accounting Standards Board and it affects special revenue funds and fund balance reporting. So in your June, the next um, comprehensive annual financial report that you get will um, report fund balance in a different way. It will be categorized in, in a different way than you're used to seeing. So that's one change to expect on, um, for GASB 54 is the standard. And that's the conclusion of the summary. If you have any questions, I'll answer them now. Do we have any questions this time? Thank you. Um, I got one, Mr. Pitt. Okay. You said a minute ago 31 of 100 counties see assessed value above market value. Mm hmm. No way to tell how many of those counties had a reevaluation this year, is there? I do not have that information, no. I better follow up and have it. It'd be 100 out of 100. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rummenstein, do you have anything else for us? Okay, thank you. Mr. Smith, we don't need a motion on that. It's information, right? No, you don't, okay. you don't need to take any answer. Uh, Mr. Rose Robinson here. He's here. Okay. Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioners, uh, it's a pleasure to be here this evening. Um, my name is Russ Rogerson. I'm with the Mooresville South Idaho Economic Development Corporation. I also have with me Mr. Stephen Daly, who is Vice President and General Manager of NGK Ceramics. It's a pleasure to be here this evening because we're here to uh, discuss with you NGK's plans for a, their 12th expansion uh, in Iredell County since they arrived in 1988 in the South Iredell Industrial Park. They currently employ 431 people and 122 temporary uh, workers as well. They're a manufacturer of ceramic honeycomb, catalytic, uh, honeycombs for catalytic converters, primarily in the automobile industry, and this expansion is gonna involve the truck industry as well. Um, they, uh, the expansion is gonna allow them to uh, 
expand the raw material preparation for a new extrusion line. And they also uh, plan to expand their bulk rail. In fact, uh, they do plan on uh, improving the rail um, spur so there will be less blockage of Mazeppa Road in this expansion, which is, will be a plus for not only NGK but, but our community as well. Uh, and that will help them with the uh, receipt of raw materials. Uh, the expansion will be completed in December of 2011 with a total investment of $43.9 million. And upon the uh, completion of the expansion, they'll create 40 or 60 new full-time jobs. And that will be the full-time employment to 491, which puts them in the top five uh, employers in the county for the number of employees. In accordance with the uh, uh, Iredell County uh, Industrial Development Incentive Program, uh, we're here this evening to ask for a five-year incentive at 3.46 uh, of the uh, increased value. Uh, that will, um, taking into account depreciation for machinery and equipment as well, and uh, that grant would total to $717,000 over the five-year period of time, an average of $143,400. Um, at this time, I would also like uh, Mr. Daly uh, to say a few words and tell you a little bit about, uh, about what they've been up to. Thank you, Russell. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, as Russell said, my name is Steve Daly. I'm Vice President and General Manager for NGK here in Mooresville. Uh, fortunately, we have been successful in our business as this is our 12th expansion over the 22 years that we've been here. Uh, I came here tonight to ask for your support in this newest endeavor. Uh, this type of support is one of the elements our headquarters is evaluating when they're making a the decision on where to actually place an expansion. In this case, corporate planners consider other sites within North Carolina or South Carolina, and also we uh, recently opened a facility in Mexico, and they were considering possibly putting things there. But uh, our established track record here in Iredell County, along with the support that, that you have given in the past, convinced them that investing here is the right decision. Uh, to close, I'd like to know that NGK will do our best to continue to make good high quality products which which help win the business but also uh, will provide good jobs here in Iredell County uh, which I think we can all appreciate. Uh, I guess at the end of the thing we can be proud to say that not only are our products made in the USA but they're also made here in Iredell County. So uh, that's all I had to present unless anybody's got a question or two. Any questions? Yeah, I, I do. Uh, first of all, we sure are um, happy that NGK has uh, chosen to grow here. Um, it's, uh, it's definitely been a win-win situation for, uh, for, for the community as well as your company. <clears throat> so, uh, first of all, thank you. Thank Next you. is, um, I did have a question. You said you thought that you would create um, about 60 jobs after this full expansion has taken place. Yes, sir. Uh, of those 60 jobs, about how many of them would you expect you, that you'll have to recruit from probably outside the community to fill, and how many would we think that would be filled probably from folks within the community who are here already? Probably four or five uh, that I would consider on the professional level for management or engineering or something like that. Right. They could as well come from this community, uh, but we'll, we'll recruit outwardly there. The rest of those jobs would be people who would be, uh, I guess, within the newspaper reach of uh, Mooresville. Great. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Any additional questions? We thank you, sir, for bringing this to us. Thank you. Uh, we will now go into a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of or against this request, now is your time. Okay. If not, I will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make the uh, motion that we grant the um, $717,000 economic incentive over a five-year period based on a $43.9 million investment by NGK Ceramics. Okay. Any questions regarding the motion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Board Commissioners. Uh, uh, we uh, hope to see you soon with some more growth in our, our community. Thank you.
public hearing is now closed. I will turn it over to Mr. Madison for administrative matters. Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you. The first item under administrative matters has been pulled, so we will go to item B. And we do have a request from the Fire Marshal's Office to approve a um, uh, grant application. Uh, we do have the Fire Marshal here tonight, uh, Ronnie Thompson, for that, and he also has members of his staff here for, for this presentation. Uh, Mr. Thompson. Okay, thank you, Commissioners, Mr. Mashburn. We're here to request that we be allowed to apply for a grant to be able to purchase a uh, pump patches and pumper robot. This would be used to enhance our fire safety program. Any questions from anyone? And where are the grant uh, funds coming from? The grant would be through factory mutual insurance. Uh, what? Through factory mutual Farmers insurance. Mutual. Farmers mutual Farmers insurance. insurance. Okay, uh, Ms. Davidson wrote the grant, or is, would be writing the grant, and Misty Sherrill is our fire educator, if you've got any questions of them. Okay. I do. Under um, upfront and ongoing cost, uh, you, you in, included the fact that the battery is $128 and the CDs are 17 to 20 each. The, those are individual items. Uh, the purpose of that, of that item, <clears throat> of that uh, category under our briefing sheet is to know how much we should expect that, that we're going to have to pay out of, Actually, out of our the, budget for the future. Can the batteries and idea? CDs are included with the patches and pumper. If we wanted additional CDs, they would cost us about $16 to $20, 17 to $20 a piece. If we ever had to replace the battery, which... Uh, According to their statistics, it usually lasts about 20 years. It would cost 20 us. 20 years? Mm hmm. If you. Okay. If, it will cost us about $128. So there's very little upkeep on patches and pumper. Okay. And are these CDs, CDs that y'all hand out at the schools or something? or? They're actually CDs that are played through the patches and pumper. It, it, oh, this okay. actually speaks, and Ms. Cheryl can tell you more about it. It's songs, public service announcements. And they actually play on the patches and pumper, and his mouth moves in sequence to those as if he were speaking or singing. Okay, so we're not looking at even a thousand dollars a year as an ongoing cost. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, good. All right, thank you. Any additional questions? If not, entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval for the uh, uh, let, let them apply for the Farmers Mutual grant. Okay. Any questions regarding the motion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed. Appreciate your initiative. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, what's the chance of getting that grant? Do you have any idea how many we're competing what? with? We don't know. It is awarded on a quarterly basis, um, but we have no idea what the chances are. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Chairman, the. Uh, Next five items actually are from the Solid Waste Department. David Lambert, Solid Waste Director, will be making those presentations. Um, I'm not here to ask for big money tonight. I know that comment was made when I come in. That's usually the, <laughs> what's going on with us. All Act your toys are big. <laughs> actually, I'm here to uh, request on this first uh, matter is a uh, uh, permission to apply for electronics recycling grant. The state of North Carolina is required that as of July 1st, 2011, that electronics can no longer be placed in landfills. It's not a big deal to us in that we've been recycling electronics since 2000. We've had one of the more proactive programs in the state. But there is requirement now that all TVs and computer monitors go in there as well. That has the potential to be expensive. Right now we have a contract with a company that's not going to charge us, but that could be subject to change in the future. And the state realizes that, so they've made money available through, it's actually funded, I guess, by manufacturer responsibility, but they put money into an account for the state and then they make it available to the, the counties or local governments. And fairly simple grant, it's not going to be a lot, it's only five to eight cents per capita, but it, it, it's there for the taking, so I'd like to ask your approval for applying for this grant. Any 
questions? Uh, you say we can't bury them in a landfill, but you still accept them at the transfer stations, won't you? We do. We you do. You keep those segregated from the rest of the trash? and then We do. We've got a company now that's picking up at each one of our sites and taking them to their plant for recycling. Okay. Excuse me. Go ahead. You, uh, you mentioned we need minor uh, adjustments to our electronics recycling program that's already in place. That, that was basically what we did. We signed a, uh, a contract with a company that would provide this service at, at no cost. And the, the biggest thing is the state right now, they're not requiring for this grant certifications like the uh, E-Steward and uh, there's one other one. Uh, but this company actually has those certifications already in place. So we're not, you know, basically we're ready to go. Any additional questions? If not, I entertain a motion. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any questions regarding the motion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed. Uh, the next item I have here is actually the modification we needed to make to the solid waste plan to allow us to apply for this grant. And it was uh, it's fairly simple. The uh, the points or some things that the state requires in this program and and like I said we were already doing most of these things uh, we've been recycling since 2000 uh, been doing it all our sites since 2008 we've recycled about 429 tons since that time uh, the program the company we signed with has e steward and r2 certifications which are the recognized standards uh, the materials here uh, i'm sure you've got this in front of you shows all the things that that we'll be able to take through this program. It's a pretty wide assortment and does have the TVs and the uh, computer monitors, which is very important. List of contractor responsibilities. Uh, there is a public awareness and education requirement there, and we have a plan for that. Uh, we'll have to keep up with all the tonnages and break it down as far as what's TVs, what's computers, and we have an agreement with the company to do that as well. Um, and there's also a, a requirement how we'll cooperate with the school system or the cities, the towns, and the county, in which we've already been doing that as well. Uh, and then how we're going to spend the funds. And they will have to be dedicated to things within the electronics program. So, you know, if we need to do advertising or packaging materials or purchase some equipment, we'll be able to do that. It's very similar to the white goods program that we have now. So I'm... I'm requesting that the, uh, the amendment to the solid waste plan be adopted. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Lambert? If not, I move the uh, amendment to the solid waste program be adopted. Okay. Any questions? Go ahead and motion. If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, the next is a request to accept an award from the uh, grade grant program. If you remember, September 21st, I brought to you a request to apply for this uh, grant, and it's the grant to replace aging diesel engines, and it's administered through Mecklenburg County Air Quality. And we requested $150,000 towards the purchase of a new landfill compactor, and they actually approved $135,000. Need to go forth with signing this uh, contract agreement with them so we can proceed with this. This this compact was actually already in our budget, so this is just represents a golden opportunity to defray a portion of the cost. It all really amounts to about the first year's payment on that machine. So, I'd like to I'd like to ask that you would approve accepting this grant. Okay. Any questions? Um, if if we accept it. For, for 135, can you can you buy what you you, you asked for 150? I assume what the size you needed was going to cost 150. Does that mean that now we need to that we that well your fund needs to come up with the 15,000 dollars well, difference? 
this actually is just a, a portion of the cost. Uh, you're allowed to apply for a maximum of 150000 so that's what I applied for. This machine will wind up costing about $711,000. So it's an expensive machine. I but should have never asked that <laughs> we, we do already have it in the budget and a, a, a plan for financing that, and Ms. Blumenstein will be presenting that next if you approve this. Okay. Any additional questions? By accepting this grant from uh, the more the Mecklenburg Quad County Air Quality folks, are we making any uh, commitment that they were going to they're going to have any control over what we do in the future, or we obligating ourselves, or well, we several like to members, run things down there. Several members of staff have looked through this. Dean Lales looked through it. He's talked to the guy that administers this for Mecklenburg County. And basically, Mecklenburg is a grantee. We're like a sub-grantee. Their money comes from EPA, from a, uh, something called the Southeast Diesel Collaborative, and there's some uh, recovery funding in there as well. But it has been done by several other counties in the region. It's been done by Town of Mooresville's actually replaced a truck, I believe, last year through it. And it seems to be pretty straightforward process. The big requirements for us that the machine operates inside Iredell County, 75% of the time, of course, it's, it's going to be there full time. We'll operate at about 2,000 hours a year, and that's part of the grant, and that we won't sell it for five years. We have to, to keep it on site. There's also a requirement as to, as to the engine that we're replacing. Uh, it's more than just the engine, but the engine has to be destroyed, that that engine cannot go to some other piece of equipment. That's correct. It does require a replacement or destruction of an old piece of equipment. We've got a 1980 compactor with a 1992 engine in it that's still running, so that's what we want to want to be able to be rid of. And I'd put down that I estimated the value at $40,000 on it, and I think I was very high with my estimate because we've priced some used compactors and uh, they're they're way below that right now especially one this age okay, any other questions if not a motion motion for approval mr chairman okay any questions go on the motion all in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. those opposed nay Thank you. As Ms. Blumenstein said, uh, as David said, Ms. Blumenstein has the financial proposal to make uh, so that we can purchase the, um, the compactor, uh, and we will be financing that if you approve this. The budget presented to you for this fiscal year for solid waste assumed that this piece of equipment would be a lease purchase. And we have recently um, talked with the company, and we're, it's about a 3.15% interest rate to do that. I talked with one of the banks. I did not go out and submit RFPs without your permission to do that, but I did talk with one bank, and they said it would probably be 2.5%. Well, I feel like if we're going to have to pay 2.5%, we'd be better served to pay it to ourselves. We have over $6 million dollars. And set aside in our solid waste um, closure, post closure fund that will not be needed for years to come. And I would recommend that we borrow from that fund uh, the amount needed to finance this piece of equipment and reimburse ourselves the interest on that instead of going to the outside and having the additional legal fees and closing costs. Uh, the T Rex equipment that has been recommended by Mecklenburg Air Quality. Uh, including the warranty is a total purchase price of 727000 The 135000 from the grant, that's 592000 We had 138000 available for lease payments in this first year. And I have included an amortization schedule to show you that um, the maximum annual debt service to ourselves is 124000 in FY 2012, we've already got that built into the solid waste budget, so I feel like this is the best way for us to go. Of course, right now, even invested funds, since all the county funds have to be collateralized, we're not getting very much on our money. 
at all. Any questions from anyone? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept this uh, recommendation and approve budget amendment number 18A. Thank you, Peter. Any questions regarding the motion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? And my final request is uh, for a resolution approving the issue of a a sanitary landfill permit by the Division of Waste Management to Iredell County. As you know, we're in the, in the middle of the process of the site suitability study for the landfill. In order to keep this project moving on schedule, we do need to uh, have our materials in place to apply for the permit to construct. And one of the requirements for that is that, that we held a public meeting and it was properly advertised and we did that uh, I believe in October and had 30 day advance notice advertised on TV, radio and in the local newspaper. So 15A NCAC 13B.1618, the state code says that down in section five, the approval of the board of commissioners having authority in the county which the site is located shall be required. Approval may be in the form of either a resolution or a vote or a motion. Uh, when you skip down a little bit and paraphrasing it, it says the jurisdictional local government where the landfill is to be located should hold at least one public meeting to inform a community, which, as I said, we've done that. It explains the uh, requirements as far as the advertising and the uh, minutes of the meeting, which you should have in front of you. And there's no money associated with this particular thing. It's already been encumbered on a purchase order previously. So I'd just like to ask for a, a resolution granting the, the Division of Waste Management permission to issue this permit. Okay, any questions? Not on entertain a motion. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Okay, any questions going to motion? Not all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. those opposed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Ron Smith will present item H and I. Thank you. Uh, the first request that I have tonight is to accept a grant from NC Diener uh, for up to $25,000 for, for the upcoming year uh, for our abandoned mobile home program. Uh, this is something that you've seen before. Back in April, uh, the board signed a resolution or passed a resolution uh, allowing us to enter into a grant application and supporting going forward with uh, pursuing this program. Tonight, I have a contract attached to your, in your package and a budget amendment uh, number 19 uh, for your consideration and, and approval. Uh, the contract states uh, basically the terms of the uh, program and has attachments that uh, would detail the specifics of how our department and planning would work with solid waste and uh, building inspections to go through with the program. Uh, the second attachment is the budget amendment to appropriate where this money would be uh, shown in the de uh, sol Department of Solid Waste's uh, budget. Um, if you have any questions about the program, I'd be glad to answer them. Uh, we're going to be spending the next month, if this is approved, working through the logistics, uh, going through with a media campaign to get the word out, and probably would not start until the beginning of the year. I'd be glad to answer any questions that you have. Any yeah, questions, Mr. Smith? Mr. Smith, as far as the logistics you mentioned, uh, are, is the planning department going to be at the point on this thing? Is that going to be the point at which the public contacts somebody and then... Well, it's, it's going to be a combination of planning and solid waste. Uh, what I would anticipate is that the public would probably get in touch with planning on the front end and then deal with the solid waste department as it gets into contractual arrangements and recycling and things of that nature. Okay. 
Any additional questions? If not, I will entertain a motion. Move to approve, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any questions? Go ahead and motion. If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? The second item that I have is a request that our department received from NCDOT, the local office, uh, to abandon and close a portion of Garden Valley Road. Um, Garden Valley Road is in the, I guess, the extreme eastern part of the, of the county. Um, it runs uh, basically north-south and crosses under the interstate and over the South Yadkin River. What the state is looking to close is about 840 feet of the road where the bridge goes over uh, the South Yadkin River. Um, the reason that they're asking for this is that that's, a very, that's an old bridge. Uh, the structure of it is such that when there's flooding, and, and which is pretty common in that area, that it collects a ton of debris uh, and, and has to, they have to basically close it down for inspections after each heavy rain to make sure that it's structurally sound. Uh, what they want to do is close it entirely and get out of, um, and not have a bridge there uh, from this point forward if they, or if the road is abandoned or this portion of it's abandoned. Um, we've talked with uh, the emergency responders uh, in the area. Uh, they don't see a problem with it. Um, we've subsequently talked with the schools and the local postmaster. Uh, they also see no problem. Basically, that you can go around this bridge and probably go around three miles out of your way, um, but get to the same point, um, but just going that extra three miles. As part of this request, the, uh, the local state or the local DOT office has asked that we waive our fee uh, for our road abandonment. Um, we have a, it's a $500 fee, which actually is our highest fee that we have. The reason for that is that there's a significant amount of um, money that goes into one of these requests and staff time. Uh, from this point, if you adopt the resolution attached, we will put a notice in the paper that will run for three consecutive weeks. We'll notify adjacent property owners via registered or certified mail and, and post the property as well. So um, it is something that is fairly costly, but they have asked that that fee be waived. I'd be glad to answer any questions that you have on either the request or the, uh, or the fee uh, waiver. Did, well, did they tell you why they want it to, why they want it waived? I mean, you know, we picked up 600 grand worth of their retirement and they, Chintzy suckers want 500 bucks. I mean, what's the problem here? I'm not giving you a no, hard time. I just don't have a lot of confidence in the state of North Carolina. I mean, no, I, I don't have I don't have a reason from them on the waiver. Okay, it'd just be nice, wouldn't it? Now, you're not actually asking tonight that they approve this, though. What you're asking is that they set um, a hearing date so that you can receive public comment uh, on the amendment of this. Yes. Is that correct? Thank you. Thank you. In, in the resolution, part of that resolution <laughs> is setting a public hearing, which is required. And I have proposed, in order to meet all of the legal notification requirements, uh, December 21st uh, as that public hearing date, unless another date is more suitable for the board. Mr. Smith, in your opinion, it is, is is this a good idea for the residents of Iredell County or not? Well, I, I, we put a lot of thought into this. Um, I don't. I, I do think it is a good idea. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a very well used road. Uh, there's not a lot of property that's developed really on either side of Garden Valley. Um, and you can tell as you as you travel through the you know along Garden Valley Road and along 40, um, area is very much subject to uh, to flooding. And I would anticipate a new bridge would would be pretty costly to to put in. And you're saying we we kind of either got to build a new bridge or we got to do this. 
there's no keeping the old bridge for all intents and purposes. Yeah, that, that's my understanding. And it's one of those old wooden, you know, basically a wooden bridge uh, for the most part, from my recollection. This is a school bus route. Is that, it, is that okay with the... Uh, we, yeah, we've spoken with the station. schools, and basically they would just reroute the bus around that point. Any other questions? But tonight we're going to schedule a public hearing on this abandonment, and at that time we'll make a decision on whether we waive the $500. Is that right? I, actually, I think you probably need to make the decision on the $500 because we have to have that taken care of before we can advertise it and so forth. Um, since um, you know, I, I, my recommendation on it would be that you go ahead and waive the $500 on this with the uh, DOT, um, but um, I mean I know that that may be setting a precedent, but I mean it is another public entity that um, we will be looking to for other services. So, or is it? it I mean, is this a spiteful public entity that we're talking about? I don't mean to be a smart aleck. I'm just asking. We, we, with the local DOT, we've had a very cooperative effort for many, many years in uh, building and maintaining the roads. Um, I, I would say that the, uh, the relationship that we've had with the local DOT over these years has been very good. Are they the, are they the decision makers in this sort yes. of thing? Let me ask, so we, we don't have to waive this, is that correct? That is correct. Uh, and they'd yeah, be mad at us. Decision makers coming into Raleigh too. It just seems rational for us to save the five hundred dollars, and it seems a little bit strange for someone to expect us to act irrationally. But maybe feelings get hurt that I don't know about. I, I mean, I, I, and again, I'm trying to not be a smart aleck. I just don't understand why we would give away money to a you know, to the state when they've got billions of dollars every year to spend. Well, what's irrational is spending three and a half billion dollars you don't have. That's irrational. I mean, that's, and again, I want to clarify, you know, I, I've never had a problem with the local DOT folks. I just have a huge problem with the people who've run the state the last few years. They're just grossly incompetent. And I'm sure these guys are getting leaned on to save money wherever they can, and hence their request to, for us to waive the fee. Well, I feel leaned on too, Mr. Johnson. I don't know about you. Well, are we are we picking a fight by not giving them $500, Mr. Smith? I, I don't necessarily think we're picking a fight, but I'll agree with Mr. Mashburn in that we have had a good working relationship with them, uh, with the local the local people um, you know I don't think there'd be a reluctance to share information with us in the future or for them to become spiteful but you know I, I think if, the closer we work together probably the better off we are well let me let me turn that on its head and ask you have they had a good working relationship with us Have we've been good uh, good people to do business with over these same years the, the local representatives sure yeah, I think so. I think we've, so. We've been good to them. Yeah. Oh, yes. Maybe they should give us an additional $500. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Well, <laughs> I'm glad you saw it coming. <laughs> well, the, the local people at the DOT are very professional people. They're very competent people, and they get a lot done with what they're given. They just work for a bunch of idiots, and they can't help that. And that's just pretty much the way it is. They're good people. They can build roads if you give them the money and quit robbing it and spending on things, other things. I mean, but I got a lot of respect for those people over there. They do a good job. They they have helped us out on occasion. Uh, just uh, Mr. Smith, I'll go along with the five hundred dollars. Just tell them that. Uh, they need to tell their boss to shape up a little bit over there. I'll leave it at that. Is that a motion, Mr. Johnson? Yeah, I'll make that motion. Okay. 
Mr. Yes. Chairman, I'd like the motion to be split into separate motions, one for the $500 and one for the public hearing, please. Okay, no problem. Is that okay with you, Mr. Johnson? That's fine. Okay. My motion would be to uh, waive the $500. Okay. Motion to waive the $500. Any questions going that motion? Hold on a second. Then the, then the other motion will be just to hold the public hearing. Hold the public hearing. Okay, any, any questions regarding the motion? Motion now is for waiving the $500. All in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. Okay. Okay. Next. Three, two. Is that correct? It's four and one. Did you, anybody else vote no? Three and two, wasn't it? Here's two it's three to two. It passed. I, I, I would like to ask them why. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, they're short of money. We're short of money. And we've agreed that we're going to waive it, and that's fine. No, no hard feelings here. But I would like to know why. Okay, Mr. Johnson. Next motion is public hearing, right? Yes, sir. Okay, motion on full for public hearing to be held. You had a date for that? Uh, December twenty-first is the date I propose. Okay. Any questions regarding that motion? Not all in favor. Please say aye. 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 Those opposed. Thank you. Okay, then if we're ready to go on to the next matter, I think um, th I think this is the first meeting of the county commissioner of our new DSS director, Yvette Smith, and um, certainly uh, glad that she's here, and she will present item J. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. It is a pleasure to be here. I'm Yvette Smith. I am your new Department of Social Services director. Uh, we are very excited about the opportunity to participate in the Job Booth uh, Employment Subsidized Program. We submitted a proposal for $158,000 to assist 30 TANF-eligible individuals in obtaining employment here in our community. Uh, tonight, I would like for you to approve the receipt of these TANF uh, private uh, foundation funds. I will entertain any questions. Any questions for Ms. Smith? Ms. Smith, well, welcome to Iredale County, first of all. I understand you're a native of these parts, but uh, <laughs> I you sure were much, am. It's good to be home. <laughs> well, you were much talked about prior to your return, although done in private, <laughs> <laughs> which became an increasingly difficult task. Uh, elaborate a little further on what you're going to do with this money. You're going to try to find these folks work, is that right, and get them trained up for that? Yes, we will be uh, partnering with two temporary agencies in our community who will um, take that ball and employ these 30 individuals into various positions within our community. Is there any uh, sort of requirement or something that, you know, when the when the the six dollar an hour subsidy when it goes away, then is there any sort of um, expectation that that, per, that 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 person is probably going to be worked into a full time position for that company? That is our goal, um, that these individuals will present themselves as invaluable to that employer and they will show their skills and their uh, abilities, and that employer will continue that employment of them. So, so in order for the employer to qualify for, for getting one of these employees, they have to show that, that they think that that could become a full-time position? Do you understand what I'm saying is, if somebody needs somebody temporary, just for a temporary job, right. do they qualify to get a temporary person, or is this somebody where it's, is, are these funds to be used where it's a company that's thinking about hiring a full-time person and this is some sort of a transitional money? Do you understand? Because, because one of them leads to full-time employment. That's Another correct. Another helps somebody out of a temporary fix. That's correct. The goal is always that these um, temporary positions will lead into full-time employment, but that is not a, a guarantee. 
uh, what is what is there is that the money will pay for 20 weeks of employment for these individuals. So the employer does not have to make any sort of a case whatsoever that that they're not just going to take advantage of it for 20 weeks, then then stop. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Go ahead, Mr. Smith. This is just kind of a standard question. You probably have to get used to, but are we making any ongoing commitment as a county to uh, to do anything after this program ends? Uh, after the federal funding ends? One of, one of the reasons that we are working with the temp agencies is that they take ownership of the individuals that they assist. And so if, say, for instance, after the 20 weeks, some individuals um, uh, do not, um, cannot find full-time employment with their current employer, these temp, uh, temp agencies will um, re will find other opportunities for these individuals with other companies. I guess so they I'm, become sort of like their clients. I guess I'm asking: is the, is the federal government asking us to continue any part of a program that they start? I say no. Any additional questions for Ms. Smith? Not our entertain a motion. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Motion to approve. Any questions on the motion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome to the shooting gallery. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. David Martin, a uh, emergency management director, is here to request uh, funding or an agreement for funding on the Viper project that I think most of you have heard about. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, I am here this afternoon, this evening, to request your approval for a memorandum of agreement uh, for Idaho County to act as a sub-grantee uh, with the North Carolina Emergency Management Division of Homeland Security for a Viper grant to place a Viper Tower on Fox Mountain. This, uh, is an $800,000 grant that is coming down to the North Carolina Department of or Emergency Management Department through the Division of Homeland Security uh, or the Department of Homeland Security uh, in an interoperability communications project. The state got five point, I think it was 5.2 million to build six sites. And we had been uh, trying to get the Highway Patrol, who manages the Viper program, to place a tower uh, in proximity, hopefully on Fox Mountain, uh, that would give us a whole lot better Viper coverage with our Viper units. And uh, they have agreed to do so. Uh, the only stipulation is coming down from the Department of Homeland Security is that Ardell County has to act, act as a sub grantee for this project. So. We have been asked to sign a memorandum of agreement uh, for this $800,000, thus acting as a sub-grantee, uh, to sign the agreement. And this is to ask for that, approval for that, and for Mr. Mashburn to sign the agreement. It says Fox Mountain in Iredell County. It's yes, sir. Fox Mountain is in the county? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, huh? Just, yeah. Yeah. Just to the east of 115. I don't know it was in the county. Who, who owns that uh, land, the, that part of the mountain where the tower will be? Mr. Godfrey? Yeah. Wilf, Wilf. Who? Wilf Godfrey, Godfrey family. Yeah. Godfrey okay. Lumber Company. So they, they're willing to have a long-term lease on it? What I understand, the lease has already been worked out between the North Carolina High Patrol and the landowner. Okay. Yeah. They came to me about a year ago and asked if there's a possibility, and I put them in touch with David. Well, uh, what would be the height of that tower? Well, I don't remember. I haven't got the specs on the tower, but I'm thinking that the acquisition director told me it was going to be about 400 foot. 400 foot. Yep, there it weighs. Steve, that going to bother the airport coming in? Mm, no, the approach is nowhere close oh, to that. No. I was thinking more about Miller or uh, 
Well, it'd be close to Miller, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, could be. Of course, Miller runs north south. Ron, I don't know of another tower this would be close to. I know we got an ordinance that restricts towers from a certain proximity to another. I don't know another one up that way. Do you? No, I, I don't. I don't. And actually, in, in talking, are you talking about is Miller another airstrip? Air park. Yeah. I think it's, is it the FCC? FAA. The FAA. They generally are going to require a study to be made to ensure that they're you know, not within. I'm sure that's already been yeah. done. When we had the Tholen Tower, we had to do that right. before we even started. I remember when we did, I don't know if it was the last one, but when we did one of those uh, ordinances regulating the placement of towers, everyone who owned a private strip in the county was given an opportunity to re register with the uh, FAA and the FCC. So. That was taken into consideration. But, uh, okay, any additional questions this morning? I'm just glad to see it. I sat on the Homeland Security Committee for Central Line back years ago after 9-11, and we'd sit there meeting after meeting, and all the local folks would tell, we've got nice fire trucks, we've got ambulances, we've got rescue squads, we've got trained people, we need better communication. They'd send us more refrigerators to put, uh, to put medicine in in case somebody got smallpox or typhoid, and we'd go back to the next meeting, we'd say, we need better communication, they would send us some more refrigerators. We had... Refrigerators. Yeah. yeah, we had refrigerators running out of our rear end, but we couldn't talk to anybody, so... Mr. That's, Ball, the, that's, the federal, mis that's the federal government for you, but thank you. Yes, I misunderstood somebody uh, where they said the location of this was. It's nowhere near Miller Air Park. Okay. So that was a misunderstanding. Any additional okay. questions? Not. I have a motion. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any questions going to motion? No. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you, Mr. Thank you, sir. Item L is a request from the tax department to approve the October 2010 uh, refunds and releases. There's um, $87,043.55 in releases, $1,898.85 in refunds. Um, tax department recommends approval. So I move, Mr. Chairman. Motion to approve. Any questions regarding the motion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? The uh, item M is an item that came up at the last meeting um, discussing oversight of funds that are used in Special Operations Division of the Sheriff's Department. Uh, and um, it was to be put back on this agenda tonight for further discussion. I think we have provided uh, some information to you as to how uh, these funds are currently uh, the oversight that they currently receive. Um, Mrs. Blumenstein is here to respond to any questions you may have uh, concerning that. And um, again, the, uh, the request at the last meeting was that you consider uh, appointing one or more of uh, the county commissioners to serve uh, in oversight of these special operating funds. Mr. Chairman, my motion is just that we have, that we designate one uh, member of the commission, and I would recommend it be the chairman, that uh, would be consulted by any department asking for uh, confidential funds uh, prior to the request for the funds and for the chairman or, or the designated uh, member to uh, discuss that with the appropriate department and reach a conclusion and make their recommendation to this board prior to us dispersing funds. I read that email and <coughs> reading that email, seeing that the county manager was responsible, the finance officer was responsible, the chief is responsible. And I just didn't know how many more people need to be responsible. Well, Mr. Chairman, I, I feel like uh, 
what what I read in the email, and Ms. Blumstein can correct me if if, uh, if I misstate this, but when I what I read was that she has established a paper trail, uh, whereupon uh, an audit would produce um, any evidence of wrongdoing, but barring such an audit, which would be retrospective. Uh, you might not see any wrongdoing. Now, the sheriff is an elected official. He has political oversight of his department, and in, in a very executive kind of way, he decides what's done with that money. But we have been given oversight of, of spending uh, intentionally, I suppose, and it seems to me that we should uh, prior to spending amounts that sometimes exceed six figures, uh, we should have the opportunity to ask the appropriate department uh, questions so that we're satisfied with the answers. Uh, <coughs> it may be that we're, we're satisfied after w one simple question or after no questions, but I would like someone on the board to to have that opportunity and to let the rest of the board know that they're they're okay with it. And I'd like that to be an elected person. <coughs> Any additional comments? Mr. Chairman, when the first matters first brought up prior meeting, I I guess perhaps the first thing that came through my mind is the old saying from World War Two, loose lips sink ships and I was a little bit apprehensive about how far we want to we want to go. When you begin an investigation such as these of a very sensitive nature, the the fewer people who know about it, perhaps the better off you are. And uh, certainly, the greater number of people, the possibility of uh, the investigate investigation being compromised certainly goes up. Um, I, I do think that uh, Mr. Cato makes a valid point. So I guess the question is how, you know, how much should we know and then when should we know it? I guess are the two questions you, you look at in the contemplation of such a matter. And uh, one possibility I had that they would uh, report back to this board or some member of this board after any bills of indictment uh, were issued. And then in a discussion with Mr. Mitchell earlier, he says, well, what if you, you have an informant you're paying? And that became knowledge. You could uh, certainly endanger the life or at least the well-being of that informant. And I think that's a good point. Uh, I guess the question I have at this point is for Mr. Mashburn. And uh, I did look at the information Ms. Blumenstein said us, and I was, I was fairly satisfied with the process of auditing these expenditures. So the, uh, the question still remained as to for protecting the identity of any informant or, or any officer and exposing them to any uh, any harm and I think we need to be careful that if any of this information is shared uh, and I'll pose this question to you Mr. Mashman we always redact the names of, of anyone involved in the investigation is whether they be an informant whether they be the object of the investigation or whether they be an officer those names are redacted or, or blacked out on any financial reporting we do is that correct that's correct and are you satisfied mr mashman that the audit process we have in effect now is adequate to make sure that uh, the money is spent as uh uh, as, far as, as, financial, as far as financial controls, I think the financial controls are in place. Um, that may or may not satisfy the board's desire to know more, but as far as the financial controls, they, they are in place. Okay, so then, then we arrive at the point, that, that being the case, we're right at the point that we're, where we need to differentiate between 
the audit of the expenditures and the effectiveness of the expenditures. And I guess that's getting to the heart of what Mr. Cadle's about, is that he's not necessarily accusing anyone of wrongdoing. He's just wanting to make sure that this is an effective expenditure of the money. Uh, let me preface any further remarks by this. I was a little bit surprised when this item was on the agenda because I know that we've taken such action in close session before uh, as far as undercover operations. Uh, I do not, I'll confess my ignorance is exactly the specifics of this particular investigation. I guess if you wanted to satisfy and I, given the information given, I am satisfied that the audit procedure in place is adequate and that the audit of the expenditures is a, is a, is a sound process according to uh, standardized accounting principles. Um, I guess if you wanted to monitor the effectiveness of the expenditures, then perhaps you could ask the Sheriff's Department at some point to come back to us and tell us what was the result of the investigation without mentioning the names of any officers, any informants, or for that matter, any person who's the object of an indictment. We all read the newspaper and the Internet. We'll figure that probably out on our own. But they could, uh, they could communicate to us the results of the investigation. And that's, I, I think that adequately addresses both concerns, but I, I do not, I want to be very careful that we do not compromise an investigation and we do not compromise the safety of anybody involved in an investigation by having too many people privy to everything that's going on. Right now, I think we have uh, Got an adequate firewall there. I want to maintain that. But uh, that's my thinking on the matter. Okay. Any other comment? I have a question for Mr. Mashburn. Mr. Mashburn, it, it, am I correct that whatever audit procedure we have is, in fact, retrospective? Looks, looks back at, at what happened to the funds. Well, it, it would look back, but it also would look at the controls that we've got in place. Uh, to, but, to but in other words, when, when we issue the money, we don't find out what happened to the money unless an investigation occurs. And if that investigation does occur, it happens after the fact and after the money has been spent. Well, and I'm going to call on Ms. Blumenstein to, to uh, fill in any blanks. When, when they request the money, there is, uh, you know, the request is made, but there's also some follow-up reporting that they have to make to show that those funds are actually expended. Now, we, we don't necessarily know, and correct me if I'm wrong, we don't necessarily know what particular buy was made and who, who the the participants were in that, but there is reporting to show that that indeed <coughs> those expenditures were made, and you may want to fill in the blanks on that, Ms. Blumenstein. That's correct. Um, the, typically a check is converted to cash, and the cash is used in the investigation. The funds are reported, the expenditure of those funds and the balances of those funds are, are reported to my office at the end of each month. And Deb or myself, one, traces out every um, disbursement from that fund. There are case numbers typically. I do not want any names at all on those reports. But Ms. Blumenstein, we don't have a we don't have an absolute definition of the, of the two words special operations, do we? No, sir. And if someone were to convert this cash to some non-public use, you wouldn't know about that at all unless you conducted an investigation. Is that correct? We accept the information that they report for case files 
case numbers as at face what, value. At face value, what it's stated. If someone lied to you, there's no way for you to know about it. That's correct. But I've never had any, I've never had any indication that there was a problem, and I've been working with that fund since 1985. But again, you might not. And, I, and, and this is not an indictment of our department. But, right. Um, any, any financial controls, if you've got collusion, they can be um, avoided. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we, we sent a bunch of deputies to jail in Davidson County about 10 years back. Right. I understand. That's why I say if there's collusion, never had any reason to believe that's the case, but with any financial controls, when there's collusion, you can never be sure that everything's perfect. And, 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 and I want to say it's not, it's not the business of this board to decide or to determine if uh, collusion or criminal activity has occurred, and I'm not suggesting that it is, but it is the business of this board to make sure that funds are spent for a public purpose and for a good public purpose and in an efficient manner. And it just seems to me that it's incumbent upon us to ask whatever questions we deem appropriate to satisfy ourselves that money we're spending on behalf of taxpayers is being spent appropriately. Mr. Bloomstein, am I correct that there's two or three people in the Sheriff's Department also has similar responsibilities to yours of keeping up with where the money's going? Yes. Um, there's a supervisor and several officers, and then at the end of the month, the cash is even counted by, a, by the chief deputy. Okay. Certifies the amount of cash is still on hand in each officer's account. So from where you sit or stand, we've got a lot of oversight already without adding more oversight. You think we need over, more oversight, more than what you're doing now? That's not. I think my office is doing all that it's responsible for doing. Um, I would never want anybody on my staff, uh, myself or anybody on my staff, to ha to know any names. Okay. Because once something gets out, right. you never know where where the leak was, and it's not going to be from the finance department. Okay, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, Mr. Blumenstein, the, f the funds that you oversee, what, can, what all can those funds actually be used for? They typically use them for buy money, for payments to informants. Those are the two. Actually, no other county services. It, it cannot be put in general funds in any way whatsoever, right? That's correct. It is totally seized funds that we're talking well, about. Well, there have been county funds used in the past, but in the last couple of years it's been all seized money. Because used to, you know, five years ago, there wasn't a lot of seized money. Mm -hmm. And that crime prevention was up to $90,000 at one point. That's what it's called. It's the, that's the line item in the budget is crime prevention. This year it was 27 five. 100 percent of it was seized money. And I think our sheriff, probably the leading sheriff in the state now for getting seized funds and drugs off the highway from what I've read about in the paper and what I've heard, our sheriff's department. They is. do very well. Um, that so far this year, um, the receipts this fiscal year have not been as great in the past, but there's already, there's still over $300,000 in federal equity sharing money. When, when money goes out, you know, there are some instances where the money's going to go out and we know it's not going to come back in. If it's going to an informant or if it's going to go for a small buy leading up to a larger buy, we know that money's going out and it's not coming back in. If it's to make a purchase that where there's going to be arrest immediately afterwards, so that means you're going to get the money back. Do, do we know that going in into any of these or you just know how much I know how much they ask it. for. I that's know it. how much they ask for. When we let, let me let me just give you some history here. And this this is I've been mulling in my mind how do you communicate this without saying too much. 
Folks, a, a few years ago, I sat back with some other people in one of these rooms back here, and the Sheriff's Department came to us, and they wanted $30,000. And like Ms. Blumenstein said, back then there wasn't a lot of seized drug money. It came out of the county coffers. And they were going to investigate some uh, cigarette purchases at JR's, transporting cigarettes across state lines for resale as an illegal activity, and that's what they were investigating. And a lot of you in this room know where that investigation wound up. It wound up in the Middle East because people in this country were buying those cigarettes at places like JR's. They were selling them. They were taking them to Detroit selling the cigarettes and using the money to fund terrorism. And it resulted in a federal trial down here in Charlotte. Now, if somebody wants to tell me that I'm not a good steward of the money because I do not want to know much about that, then I'll just bear that burden. But I don't want to know that. And the reason I do not want to know about that is because I personally care more about the person who is on the ground in that investigation and their well-being and the success of that operation. I care more about that than what I think, than I care about what people think of me. Now, I cannot sit here for the life of me, figure out any methodology by which you can measure the effectiveness of such an endeavor on the front end without compromising the task before these people. And it is a difficult task. Now, if you want to talk about some methodology by which you can, after Ms. Blumenstein and Mr. Mashman have conducted an audit of the expenditures, then if you want to talk about afterwards the effectiveness of those expenditures and then use your assessment of that effectiveness to determine whether you will grant such a request in the future, that is the way to do it, and it's the way it should be. At the end of that investigation, you can say, you can hear them say, we had this many people arrested, this much money was spent, here's what we got in federal revenue, this was a very successful operation. And then you will base your decision on the next operation based on the effectiveness of that. I know that that's... Monday morning quarterbacking, but I do not know of a way to conduct that type of oversight on the front end without putting too many people in the loop who may compromise someone's safety. And that's kind of where I am on it. Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm not suggesting anything that's in conflict with what Mr. Johnson said. That, that's fine, for instance, uh, to, to have that person have an ongoing conversation with the department and and continually monitor that after the fact, continually monitor that in such a way as not to compromise an investigation or any investigations, but for that person to be in the know to the extent that, that, that they can look at the rest of this board and say, someone outside the department has looked into this matter I believe that, that the department continues to do the right thing, and I believe this continues to be a good use of taxpayers' money, and I recommend that you vote for it. Or you may say, I recommend that you vote against it based on, based on reasons that I will be glad to give you uh, in, a, uh, in a closed session, at, at which time we could enter closed session and discuss the problem if, if there was one. But I, I, I think my recommendation is consistent with, with Mr. Johnson's wishes. Mr. Smith, do you have anything? Uh, I, if it's ready, I'd just like to table it till after the closed session and come back. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Yeah, it's fine with me. All right. Okay, uh, request for approval of November 9th minutes. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any questions regarding that? Motion. Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Announcing the effects of the current on boards and, com and commissions. There are none. Appointments to boards and commissions. Recreation Advisory Board, four appointments. Mr. Chairman, I have one of those. Okay. 
I'd like to nominate Barbara Thorson. Okay. Are there other announcements for nomination? Uh, nominate Bob Howell, Bill Freshwater, and Mark Hyland. Okay. Any additional? If not, all in favor of those four, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Uh, zoning Board of Adjustment, four appointments. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate Mac McCombs and Linda Brader. Okay. Any additional? We still haven't heard anything from Ms. Parrish or Mr. West, Madam Clerk. That's correct. Okay. Okay, Mac McCombs and Linda Brader. Okay, all in favor of those two, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Board of Health for appointments. Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like to nominate Mark Tart and Dr. Kimberly Randall. Any additional names? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate Dr. Heather Day and uh, Mary Johnson. Okay. That is four. All in favor of those four, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Home and Community Care Block Grant Committee, six appointments. Mr. Chairman, I'd nominate Doc Blackwelder, Vicki Caldwell, Mildred Johnson, Mary Jo Danner, Barbara Barrier, and Carolyn Jordan. Okay. Any additional names? If not, all in favor of those six, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Farmland Preservation Board, one appointment. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to table that one. Okay. Motion to table. All in favor of that motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed. Criminal Justice Partnership Program Committee, six appointments. Mr. Chairman, I nominate Sarah Kirkman and Carl Robbins. Okay. Any others? Okay. All in favor of those two, please say aye. 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 Those opposed. Mr. Chairman, we can return to the Farmland Preservation Board. Sure. One moment. Uh, I've got a couple of names. I talked to uh, Mr. Vaughn. Uh -huh. We really need someone in the from the southern county part of the county, if at all possible, to take Mr. Overcast's place. And he's given me a couple of names, and I came up with one in talking to Miss Tice this afternoon. I'll contact those folks. Okay. And try to have you a nominee. But okay. Who, who else is on that board now? Oh, uh, Jim Dobson, Charles Carter. We just need someone from Southern End. Yeah. Okay. And there's a couple of good prospects down that way. Okay. okay. Person of basic list, we're looking for somebody there. Am I right, Ms. Moore? Uh, yes, sir. And we have an applicant, Denny Miller, is interested in serving. Okay, Denny Miller. Well, which one? Personnel Advisory Committee. On the reminder list. Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Nominate Denny Miller. Okay. Human Resources with J.C. Steele. Okay. Any additional number of these? Yeah. Not all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Unfinished business. We have any unfinished business? Okay, if not, we'll move to public comment period. I think I have one name of someone who wanted to speak. Actually, I think I Mr. Walden left. has left. Mr. Walden, yes. He's no longer here. He's gone? Thank God. Okay. I move to new business. Any new business? Okay, county manager's report. Mr. Chairman, uh, I just have one item that I think is uh, worthy of uh, public uh, announcement here in that last week the, um, there was the Farm City uh, annual meeting that was held at the Agriculture Extension Office, uh, Cooperative Extension Office, and uh, there was some information presented there that um, Sometimes we take for granted, but I thought they were numbers that were worthy of uh, further uh, consideration. In, in Arnold County farm income for 2009, which is the last um, 
numbers that we have available at this time, the dairy industry brought in $44,116,000. Poultry industry brought in $31,114,000. Then there were also 20, there's $21,590 in field crops. And then um, several other areas uh, bring in a total of total farm income into Ardell County for 2009 of $118,428,000. And, I, and you know, I, I bring that up just to show you that, um, you know, we have a lot of um, different types of industry, diversification of industry in Ardell County, but certainly agriculture still plays a very major role in our economy. And um, uh, with all the bad things that are, that are going on as far as the economy right now, and of course, the agriculture industry is not totally uh, immune from from the downturn, but it is still bringing in a, a large um, base into Ardell County. And, and I just wanted to bring that to to the attention. I know most of you were at that meeting, but uh, since this would get it into the record, I think I think it'd be good to bring it up. Thank you, Mr. Master. Do you have anything else, Mr. Master? Oh, at this time, we will go into closed session on the personnel, GS-143-318.11, Section I, Item 6.
As a result of our closed session, uh, we have a motion to offer. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, set the salary at uh, for the newly appointed Register of Deeds at the county step uh, closest to $57,000 within the grade range. Uh, 75. We'd be paid grade 75. Paid grade 75. And that we eliminate the uh, travel allowance. Is that correct? The monthly travel allowance? Well, that was... I think uh, Mr. McCall was going to make that request at a later date. Yes. Okay, we'll, we'll scratch the travel allowance then and okay. leave the rest of the motion intact. Okay. So you heard the motion. Do you have any questions regarding the motion? If not, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Mr. Chairman, I move to Motion to adjourn. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Thank you.